Hi and welcome to the Azam Sharp YouTube channel. I'm your host Muhammad Azam. We will be continuing learning the messages extensions in iOS 10. Now, if you have not watched the last three episodes, I highly recommend that you do so because this, of course, is episode or part number four, which builds on part one, two, and three. So let's get started now. In this episode, I'm going to cover how you can pass information from the sender to the receiver. Okay. Now, uh, let's go ahead and check out that uh, right over here, all right, in the component section. So let's first, uh, let me actually show you what our app actually does. Now, if you have been following the screencast before, it should be a little bit aware of what our app does. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. Now, this is going to take a little bit of more time to run the app. I'm using Xcode um, 8 beta 2. Uh, and in which apparently the simulator or the emulator became a little bit, you know, slower. So it's going to take a little bit of time to run that. I'm still going to wait for it. And then you can see that how you can pass information or pass data from uh, one point to the other. So let's go over there. I'm going to run our extension. And you can see our extension, the compact view, is simply a, a, just with a button. So I'm going to, oops. All right, I thought I removed all the breakpoints. So let's go ahead and remove it. All right, I'm going to say send message, and it attaches a picture to the message and a caption, and I can send it. And I can go back to uh, John the Pleased, uh, and then you can see the picture over here. And if I click on it, it will open a green view. All right, that's what we did last time. Now, of course, when I'm talking about passing data, passing information, I'm not really talking about passing the actual text message. There's no way that you can handle that. That will be invasion of privacy. So whatever the person is writing in their text message, nope, you cannot access that. But what you can do is attach small bits of information uh, that can go back and forth. And basis of that, you can have like a, some sort of a track of, uh, of, uh, of your session. All right, or your conversation. So the field that I'm going to be looking at is the URL field over here. Now you can see the URL. We simply created the URL, but we didn't really pass anything. So let's go ahead and pass something to it. So I'm just going to say query item equals to um, URL query item. And you'll see that it has a name and a value. So I'm going to say name is message. And value, I'm going to say Hello world. All right. Now I just need to add this query item to the collection, which I can do something like that. That should be good. Let's go ahead and build this. Everything looks okay. So this is this method, uh, method or the function add message view controller did submit basically is invoked whenever I click on the send button. All right. So now the URL will actually contain a query item, which will be consist of a name, which has a value, hello world. So this is the sender part now. This is sent, inserted, and of course the URL is actually not displayed to uh, the receiver. So they have no idea what, you know, what the URL is. And that's how you're maintaining that kind of a session, the conversation. Now on the, other side, which is the receiver, uh, I can actually go over here. Let me see, I have a little bit of code, will become active, transition, will transition. Let me actually see, I'm just looking at some of my old code over here to make sure that I get it right. So over here in the, yeah, this guy over here, present view controller. Now present view controller is fired pretty much like on, I'm firing it when the the actual messages extensions become active or even there is a transition which is let's see will transition over here yeah so this is when you're transitioning from a compact view of the messages extension to a fully fledged the whole complete screen view all right now this is the expanded state this is the compact state i want to get that url whatever the person entered whatever the sender entered, I want to access to that. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna say over here, guard, 
let message. Now I do know that this is part of the conversation dot selected message. All right. Now I can say over here fatal error uh, message not found, and then I can say components and URL components. And let me go ahead and say string message.url. So at this point, this is it. This is the URL that we're going to get. All right. And then I can say absolute string. All right. And I have to put the, let me see. Yeah, I'm getting wrong over here. Might have to do this one. Where am I missing? I think before string and after over here. Sorry about that. All right, so we got the components and then I can retrieve the query item that I just inserted. So I can say components dot query items number zero because right now I just have one and I can pass that information. Um, let me see. All right. So now I can pass that information. So I can simply say over here, message, and then I can find query item dot value. All right, so I can pass that. Now, of course, our message detail doesn't really get that value, doesn't really have any information about that. So let me go. So see, it's not able to find that. So I need to update that one. Um, if I can find one, uh, there we go. And I can simply say message is of type string. And then I can say controller dot message equals to message. All right, let's go ahead and build this. Now controller already have, I have already created a property on the controller, which is of message detail view controller, the green one, remember? the expanded one, and that's going to hold the value and display it on the screen. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to put a breakpoint over here and run it again. Now it might take a little bit of time to run this. Uh, messages extensions usually are taking a little bit of time to, to run it, but that's the only way to do right now because it is in beta state. It is improving every uh, couple of uh, weeks, I would say, when, whenever Apple pulls, pushes out uh, the new update for Xcode, which contains a lot of changes for Swift 3, as well as the uh, different APIs that you have been using. Um, there is a poll, if you follow me on Adam Sharp, at Adam Sharp, there is a poll on Twitter where I'm asking what kind of screen crass, screen cast that you want to see. So we'll make sure that you check out the poll. So I'm going to say send message over here. All right. So this is sent by Kate. And I'm going to go back to join Apple Seed and click on this guy. And here we go. This is going to get fired. I get components, query item. So we got some query item over here. And let's see the message. Here we go. See the hello world message? All right, so I'm going to say play, and there we go. So you have passed some sort of information, a small bit of information, which is part of the URL. Now, the URL, it doesn't have to be some URL to something like HTTP, Google.com, or Apple.com. It can be basically what you're doing is you're using a query string to pass in some data back and forth. Now, I still, of course, don't really know that if this is going to be the final thing, if this is the way that you're going to pass back and forth data. Uh, I don't know the answer to that, but right now that's the only way to pass basically, well, apart from that you can store it on the cloud and all that stuff, the simple amount of data that you have, you can use it to, you can use URL property to pass that around. All right, and that's pretty much it. I mean, that's how you pass information. I mean, query string can be multiple query strings. You can pass message, you can pass first name, last name, whatever you want to do, but it has to be encoded into query string format, which of course URL components allows you to do that. Uh, one last thing I will, I know a lot of you are have started uh, subscribing 
to the Adam Shab YouTube channel. Uh, one thing that I would be really grateful if you start supporting the channel also. I mean, all of these videos, as you can imagine, takes a lot of time and effort to, uh, to make, to push it on YouTube. I mean, the amount of time is not in hours, it's in, literally is in days. And uh, I hope that you're liking these videos. And if you do, please go ahead to youtube.com slash Adam Sharp and support this channel. Thank you very much and you have a great day.